Hello and welcome to the first Louis Berthoud's music review in a while. Um, today I'm reviewing The Sun. Giant Claw is the alias of electronic music producer Keith Rankin, who has been quite prolific this decade, both as a solo artist and also a member of the band Death's Dynamic Shroud. Now there's a band name for you. Those guys have released, I think, three records and counting this year. However, Rankin's last record as Claw wasn't since 2017, so it's, it's good to see the project being continued on this new record here, Mirror Guide. And yeah, on the album we're, we're treated to quite a stylish blend of neoclassical sounds, but put through this hyper-electronic production, which um, is incredibly well-constructed and clearly um, produced by someone who knows what they're doing. And it feels like the appeal of this record is really the sounds some quite pleasant and others somewhat less so, sort of appear in your field of vision, or field of hearing rather, and then fizzle violently out again. So really the question I'm asking myself is, am I in the mood for a Pepsi Max? Just before we get into individual tracks, I would like to add a side note to do with the, the sound of this record, because obviously the combination of neoclassical sounds and hyper-electronic music production Kind of reminds me a little bit of, of a, a, a you know record that came out earlier this year, Igloo Ghost's new one, Lay Line Eon. And I would just say that um, the sounds are quite similar, though. Funnily enough, I had an easier time digesting Mirror Guide, and I'm not entirely sure why that is, because it's certainly abrasive. But I think it might have something to do with the fact that um, Mirror Guide is shorter. And also, some of the songs on it seem to be quite distinct, and um, they seem to offer an entire sound world, rather than just being meandering or, um, you know, sensationalist in the sounds used. That's not necessarily a knock on Igloo Ghost's record, I do still think it's, you know, it's incredibly well constructed and the sound design is incredible. I just do find it's a little bit meandering for its own good. Um, and obviously, Mirror Guide, sure, it meanders, a little bit like I am doing right now. but. Um, there's a few tracks, especially in the first half, which I think are absolutely solid. And yeah, don't meander at all, I would say. Uh, I realise this has kind of extended it a little bit, there's a bit of a tangent there, but I thought it's worth mentioning, you know, um, the comparison to be made. So let's move on to, I guess, the individual tracks on this new album, Mirror Guide, Keith Rankin, uh, Giant Claw, <laughs> Mr. Big Hand himself. Earther, much like the title would suggest, grounds us into the sound world, and I feel it really eases us in slowly to what is going to be a more progressively abrasive sounding album. Um, it's sort of it's fabricated upon these quite vibrant sounding pizzicato strings, which play quite an interesting rhythm. I'll go into why that is interesting in a second. But yeah, the actual sound of it, it definitely eases us in slowly, I'd say. Um, and it's not really until later tracks that we're given a full frontal foray into the world of Keith Rankin's sounds. But yeah, the rhythm of those pizzicato strings, it, it almost sounds like a bouncing ball being dropped onto the floor. It's got that sort of progressively faster rhythm about it. It goes dun 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 It gets progressively faster until obviously it can't get any faster. Um, however, I would say, even though it is a bit like a bouncing ball, it's sort of it obeys the laws of physics only to a certain point, and there's definitely an artificial sound to this rhythm, which I think is just great. Um, it's really quite a captivating introduction, even if it's not the most listenable thing in the world. I think if you if you give it a chance, it can be quite interesting to hear. Not to dwell too long on this track, but I'll also just mention that the chord sequence underpinned by these pizzicato strings is quite a conventional one. It's quite pleasant sounding, and I think that does go on to be quite a recurring theme across the record's duration. We essentially get this um, fairly standard harmonic progression, which is delivered in a very not standard kind of way, um, yeah, which we'll see in later tracks as well. On the next track, uh, the pizzicato strings are replaced with brassy sounds um, instead. So blown brass instruments like trumpets, trombones, that kind of thing. Obviously they're quite electronic sounding and artificial sounding as well. Um, in almost evokes something of John Hassel's approach to layering the trumpet in on some of his classic records from the 80s, which you should definitely all check out. Some of my favourite albums of all time. 
written by the man John Hassel. Not to go on too much of a tangent there, we can talk about that in another video, but um, just as a side note really. And yeah, this track, Mercam Startup, it's, it's short, it's sweet, it's quite warm sounding, but there's still definitely a sense of urgency still underpinning it. Um, even if that urgency isn't quite realised until the next track, Mercam Online. Yeah, that track is really when shit hits the fans. We're immediately met on this track with the thrum of pizzicato insects. Abrasive pizzicato insects, which <laughs> are made no less abrasive by the fairly pleasant harmonic material, as well as the glossy production over the top. Um, really, this is quite an insane sounding track, which is certainly... <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm quite, I'm kind of glad that we're given the first two songs to build us up to this one because it is, it's quite an assault on the ears. All I'll say about it is it sort of makes me think of a, a slightly more contemporary and a lot more batshit crazy version of Fenez's Before I Leave, which is a, a song that came off his Endless Summer album, I'd say. Definitely check that song out if you like this, because I really do think Endless Summer is a, it's a key influence on this kind of glitchy electronic music. As another caveat, I'd also recommend you check out this uh, video that Keith Rankin put up of him sort of detailing his process on how he constructed the track Mercam, Mercam Online. Uh, it's quite interesting if you're into that sort of thing. I've not watched it all, but it, it definitely um, reveals some of his tricks and some of his motivations for creating this crazy, crazy music. Obviously, I'll link that in the description below. And yeah, while you're down there, feel free to comment below. Um, did you enjoy this album? Uh, did you enjoy this review? If you did, let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to reply to you in due course. But back to the songs, really we've got to track three here and I personally think that the first three are a mere warm-up for the next track, This World, which comes as our track four. It sort of almost comes as the first song on the album on account of the, the vocal feature from Nitsky. That's N-T-S-K-Y. It's either Nitsky or Night Sky, I'm just, I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to get that cleared up from the artists themselves, I think. But yeah, their feature, their vocal feature, um, includes this quite urgent, multi-layered, whispered approach, which <laughs> definitely um, doesn't feel out of place on such an urgent, multi-layered album so far. But what's interesting is the vocal feature only occurs in the first minute of the song. The rest of the track is sort of business as usual for... Um, giant Claw, Keith Rankin, um, but it's just that first minute that's we're given a vocal feature, I guess, and it's quite strange, but I definitely think it it helps anchor the song, and it, it's, yeah, because of that anchoring, and also because of some other reasons that I'll go into later, that song is definitely my favourite song on the album, and really quite a highlight of the year so far, I would say. That's just something really quite... Um, alien but touching about this song, especially around the 1 minute 55 mark. Around there, the song kind of breaks down into this just single arpeggiated pizzicato string, and then from there the track builds up again. And there's these really big hits from the drums that come in. I think it's around 1 minute 55. You'll have to listen to that section to get what I mean, but these big drum hits come in and then suddenly the track just seems to build towards something frenetically. It's very chaotic and very um, off-putting, but something that, that grounds it in humanity and gives it that emotion that I mentioned before. It's just this lovely little clarinet line, that, that, or this clarinet rather, that plays quite an evocative line. And it just comes at just the right time to offer yeah, the antidote to all the chaos. And I, I just love that moment. I really, the first time I heard it, I was kind of, it kind of made me take this album seriously. And... Yeah, I was very excited about it, sort of reinstated my, I guess, enjoyment, my passion for new music. I was like, ah, good, I finally found something that um, excites me. Um, yeah, it's a great moment and a great song overall. This world, that world, whatever, um, <laughs> highlight from the year for me. The next track, Until Mirror, acts as... I guess, a cool-down after these first four, which is, is much needed. However, I would say it also perhaps signals the decline in interest that I personally get from this album. Like I was expecting perhaps a change of pace in the track after Until Mirror, especially seeing, it was the, seeing as it was the title track. 
I kind of wanted something a little bit um, different, perhaps. And what I was met with instead was quite a meandering track that sort of treads similar ground to the first four songs. Like to make another Fenez comparison, I would say on a record like Endless Summer, each of the songs, even the ones on the back half, seem to offer a different sound, I guess, even if it still ties into the same aesthetic. And I would say um, on Mirror Guide, yeah, perhaps we could have done with a bit of a change of, of sound around this point. Um, I mean, I'm not complaining. It's still, it's still good music, but I just... <laughs> I'm kind of in need of some music that has less jagged edges at this point. I really want to turn off Mirror Guide and listen to something with a bit more of a beat, a bit more to hold on to, and I just find this nine-minute song. Yeah, it's a nine-minute track, did I mention? And it does just, just meander a little bit too much. The album definitely closes with something a little more tangible with the, the final song, the closing track. It, it brings in quite an interesting vocal sample again which, unlike Disworld, is actually a, more of a classical delivery, sort of <laughs> like a soprano almost, which has definitely some compelling moments on the track when the soprano mixes with the electronic production. However, yet again, I do just find that by this point on the record, I'm not really wanting to get my head blown off by something weird and, and jagged. I kind of almost want potentially a recapitulation or a cool down, a wind down, or just something a little more... Really hard to describe, but more like Before I Leave by Fenez, that track, it seems to do one thing and one thing very well, whereas a lot of the tracks, including this closing track, just don't seem to have a focus. Yeah, put it that way, don't have a focus. Unlike some of the, the tracks on the first half, which I think, even though they don't necessarily have a huge focus, they're a lot more grounded. <laughs> so, uh, to wrap up, a much needed wrap up after all this bloody talking, I will say that while Mirror Guide isn't the sort of record I will put on all the time, and it's certainly not the kind of album where I'll queue it up on an evening with friends, unless those friends are really on the same wavelength when it comes to new music and uh, batshit crazy music at that, I would say that um, when I'm in the mood for something, yeah, I'll say it, dazzling, alien and pristine sounding, with a very strong aesthetic and compositional prowess, I'm definitely going to check out Mirror Guide, especially from, for some of those songs on the first half of it. Um, like, yeah, the first three are pretty entertaining, I would say, and each offer a different vibe. And then uh, Disworld, obviously. Honestly, the, the strange combination of vocals, pizzicato strings, clarinet, in combination with a hugely imaginative compositional sensibility, um, Keith Rankin's Disworld is definitely one of my top tracks of the year so far. And yeah, that sort of wraps up my thoughts on this album. Uh, I definitely I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to give it a strong 6 out of 10. But the reason why it gets a strong 6 and maybe even a light 7 out of 10 is just those. Those particular highlight tracks that I've talked so much about already, which I won't go into again. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, please do feel free to leave a comment. Uh, on what, what you thought of this album. I'll definitely try and reply to you. And yeah, I'll see you in the next review. Bye-bye.